the 5th of April, and I'm modeling the Think Aloud strategy for how to read our investigation description. The thinking aloud that I'm going to do will be to plan the investigation. So here goes. Listen carefully. Don't interrupt me while I think. I'll try to do it out loud. The lab is called Friction Investigation. When you kick a soccer ball along the ground, you know that when you stop kicking the ball, we'll eventually roll to a stop. What happens to the kinetic energy of the ball as it slows down? The law of conservation of energy states that the energy cannot be created nor destroyed. Therefore, the kinetic energy of the soccer ball does not just disappear. It changes form. Where does all of that energy go? This is a laboratory investigation in an e-folio project. Get your cameras out and smile. The essential question is, how does energy transform when an object slides or rolls? Or, another opportunity question is, why does something stop on its own? Investigative questions. How does the rolling surface affect the energy transformation of a rolling ball, or sorry, of a rolling car? Procedure starter. At a chosen height, determine the gravitational potential energy of a matchbox car. Think of a way to show how the energy transforms, transforms possibly using different surfaces to make it obvious. Share your results with others on the e-folio. Connect back with the essential question. There's a blank space for hypothesis, variables, control, and then we start with the procedure. I suggest making a ramp. Don't forget that you know how to calculate the downward force of the car. Here's a hint. Think. Wait. Also, you know how to calculate work. See if you and your group can put these <coughs> concepts together to figure out the GPE of the car at the top of the ramp. When you know how much energy the car started with, you might be able to devise a way to know how much energy your car lost by the time it stops. In your e-folio, you can think about where the energy goes. I have a picture of a data table and I have some analysis questions. Here's the data table. And the analysis questions read, uh, really smart conclusions will answer these questions. How does your data confirm or refute your hypothesis? What does the answer tell you about energy transformation? Conclusion, I'm looking for thoughtful responses to the following questions. How do your error sources impact your investigation? How do you know? Two, what questions are left unanswered for you? What are the next steps for this investigation? Helpful hints to consider. How does the energy transform from gravitational potential energy to other forms of energy during the motion? Make sure you consider transformations in the kinetic energy and other forms like sound, heat, elastic potential energy, and others that you might think of. For full credit and maximum college and career readiness, document this project on your e-folio. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to think out loud about what I just read and attempt to explain and think about the experiment that I'm about to do here. First of all, in the beginning paragraph, I'm thinking, uh, why is he talking about a soccer ball? Um, I read along and I think, it says something about kinetic energy. I know from class that kinetic energy is energy of motion. The ball slows down. We all know things slow down, but we also know that energy is conserved. And that's why he's saying something about kinetic energy doesn't just disappear. Well, this investigation must be about where that energy goes. And sure enough, there's the question, where does energy go? Why do things slow down? So I'm looking at this essential question. I'm, I'm thinking I don't really need to know about it because it's like the last thing I'm going to do. It's what I'm going to reflect on after I've done the investigation. It says, how does energy transform when an object slides or rolls? Um, or why does something stop on its own? I look at the two questions and I'm trying to figure out what the difference is. How does energy transform when an object slides or rolls? And why does something stop on its own? And it occurs to me that something's going to stop on its own if all of its energy transforms. So as I think that through, I realize they're really the same question. Um, I could answer either of them on my e-folio, and the, the answer would be the same. Um, but then I go to the investigative question, and Mr. Schmidt usually asks me investigative questions because they're more specific about what we're going to actually do. And it says, how does the rolling surface affect the energy transformation of a rolling car? <laughs> Um, my guess is that he hasn't told us enough information yet to help us understand, and I'm going to pay attention in class because at that point um, he's going to probably demonstrate something or show something that I don't know about. But he's got a rolling surface and a rolling car, and what I know, what do I know about cars and rolling surfaces? Well, I know from being a little kid that when I rolled a matchbox car on the carpet, it hardly went anywhere. But when I rolled it in the kitchen on the linoleum floor, it would go real far. So there must be some relationship there that we're going to talk about in this investigation.
procedure starter, at a chosen height, determine the gravitational potential energy of a matchbox car. Think of a way to show how the energy transforms, possibly using different surfaces to make it obvious. Share your results with others in eFolio. Well, just based on that, I can hypothesize that if I have a rough surface, just based on the investigative question, if I have a rough surface, the car's not going to go very far. So that's a clean cut hypothesis. If I change the surface and the surface is rough, the car won't go very far. Well, that makes me think of the, the variables. Distance, that's how far the car goes. Distance would be one of my variables. Probably my dependent or independent. I always get them mixed up. Dependence thing that you're supposed to do when you're, when you're measuring something. So the dependent variable is the thing that I'm going to be measuring. And the independent variable is probably going to be the surface type that I use. So like, let's say I use this floor. Um, maybe Mr. Schmidt has some other kinds of surfaces I can experiment with. Or I could go outside and use the concrete. Or I can use a tabletop. I can see different ways I could do this. So I've got my variables, distance and the type of surface. The control, I'm not sure a control is going to fit in this investigation. I think I'll talk to my groupmates about it and we'll talk it over and see if that makes sense. Um, when it comes to the procedure, I'm reading this and Mr. Schmidt's suggesting something. In the very first sentence says he suggests a ramp. That must mean that I should make a ramp. And it says that I can calculate the downward force on a car. I remember from class that I can calculate weight. And that's equal to FW equals MAG. So if I have the mass of the car, which I think I could get using some tools, I'll have to ask Mr. Schmidt about that, and acceleration of gravity, we've already learned in class, so I'm thinking um, I have that in my notebook. I can look it up, but I think my, my classmates know what it is. See if you and your group can put these concepts together and figure out GPE. Um, yeah, I bet you we can. We've done it a bunch of times in sample problems. So if I know how much energy the car started with, that must mean I need to know the height of my ramp. Um, I know the mass of the car and acceleration of the car, so I'd be able to figure out the GPE. And as I look at the data table, I'm thinking, oh, look, ramp, ramp height, GPE, and he's got a, a blank space here for other data. I'll have to plan that out with my student, with my classmates. But I'm pretty sure I can come up with my own personal procedure from this experiment, knowing I've got to make a ramp knowing that my dependent variable is the distance it travels, and knowing my independent variable is the surface change. We could come up with an experiment and explain it later. I'm sure that we could do that. And anyway, the period's about to be over, so I think I'm done and I can explain it. Um, we'll worry about these analysis questions later because they're always the same for all the other labs that we've done. I think I'm finished. <laughs>